hello um i am back at doing what i do um i'm really excited i have a lot of news uh a lot of stuff to get through um i really really am excited to be uh back making videos i'm gonna be doing this a lot more um i have my notes off to the side because this is kind of like a weird setup i know that you guys can't see that but like there's a lot going on um and hopefully I will be able to have a lot more of a, you know, structure going on than what is happening right now. So this is going to be a three-part series. It's the LGBT community um, in, in witchcraft. There was, I will say, before I even get started, there was a lot to this topic. Like, when I was looking at this, I was like, holy cow, it's a can of worms, you know? Like, I literally dove down the rabbit hole. It was kind of um, eye-opening because when I originally was looking for just queer witches or just in general, there were so many people that were available on the platforms to follow. But when you looked for history, at first, I will say, it was a little difficult when I first just looked up what it was for witchcraft. It was kind of hard to figure out and tell because there was so many that use it in a religion base. I am only going to be covering paganism and the Wicca faith um, because one, that's the only education that I really have in this craft and two, there's so many different um, avenues of witchcraft and how it's used in different religions through different cultures and all of that that I didn't want to miss so much information. So this is going to be a three-part series. Um, today we're going to be talking about the history and the religion aspect of what I could find within the community um, and then we will continue from there. Uh, if you are listening to me right now um, on my podcast, you will be getting a two-part series. So next week, you'll be getting a longer episode that will include a little bit more information. So if you are following me or subscribe to me on my YouTube channel, you can find that. I'll keep everything in the description for you. So why are we doing this? <laughs> well, funny, funny you should ask. If I went on YouTube, which I did, when you just generally search up LGBT in witchcraft, you don't get a whole lot. It, it was kind of hard for me to find lengthy videos about it when I tried searching up queer witchcraft. There wasn't a lot of old knowledge. There was a lot of new knowledge, which is great. Not a lot of old knowledge. And I really wanted to make sure that I had a foundation um, before I really dove into things. When the Stonewall riots happened, there was a huge boom. I, I'm gonna include all my sources and everything in descriptions of, of where I'm posting this, but I found a document that went through every single religion type that there possibly was. Every single section was in the 70s, this happened after the Stonewall riots, this is what happened. During this, this activist became a group of this. Literally all of it was kind of connected, um, which is really interesting because it was really cool to see that around the same time there was this huge discussion in all these different religious groups because it it's very important that there is a spot for us everywhere. Whether it's day-to-day -day life <laughs> or it's in your spirituality, you belong everywhere and you should be able to feel safe and you should be able to have that community and be able to share your faith with other people because as much as we are able to do things by ourselves, we need a family, you know, and we make our family. That's, that's the cool part. According to the University of Delaware, 93% of pagan religions are in favor of LGBT, are in favor of the protection of the LGBT community. That's compared to the 66% of Christianities or Christians that were in this study that were in favor. 
So it's really not a big surprise that there's a lot of witches fluid with their gender, with their sexuality. They're very, very open to all of this because as we will get into, I would like to say and just kind of put it out there, every single person that is born into this world has magic that flows through them. Every single person. Whether, it, whether whatever belief that you believe, you have that in you. And because of that, it is so spectacular for people who have that fluidity, for people who have that sense of what they what they want and who they are in such a big part of just being a human, which is your sexual like outlet and your sexuality, that it's amazing that queer people are able to love as freely as they are not on a political stance, <laughs> but just in general, they're able to love freely. Leo Martello was a activist, an author, a Wiccan priest. He also was um, the founder of Strago Wicca, which is a branch of Wicca that focuses more of the Italian heritage and like ancestral teachings of that type of culture. Um, and he was part, he, like, came when everybody kind of jumped in with the Stonewall riots. He didn't fully believe with what they were doing and how they were taking a stance against the police brutality. So he decided to leave and join the Gay Liberation Front, which it seems like when I did a lot more research, there was a lot of people that were, that were also... Um, pagan or Wiccan that were in this group. So a lot of these people knew each other. They went to the same meetings, they were in the same area. There was a lot of people that founded their own kind of thing outside of it. Within that group, he wound up uh, writing articles, he had columns, he actually had a column called The Gay Witch, which was in a newspaper for the LGBT community. Um, he also wrote a book called Witchcraft and the Old Religion. Um, that book was one of the first books that was written by witches for witches. He essentially took the book that other people were trying to write that were not in the craft and he almost like set the record straight, kind of. Um, so he continued to hold this type of activism within the group. He took what he was learning from the Gay Liberation Front and he went into the witch community and he kind of was trying to combine the two. And this kind of led to a lot of that gay activism within, but also using your craft that kind of just accumulated and did its thing. Then there was Arthur Evans. He was an activist and Arthur. Arthur. Author. Um, but he went to school for philosophy and he joined the Gay Liberation Front. He wrote a popular book called Witchcraft and the Gay Counterculture, which I'm actually going to do something completely separate for that. Public lectures um, and generated a group called the Radical Fairies. The Radical Fairies actually has been around for a long time but it was not an established group. Of, but the Radical Fairies was a group that became more developed after the Stonewall Riots and Arthur Evans had a lot to do with that development. The group of the Radical Fairies tends to be primarily gay men, but they are accepting of all genders. And when I went on their website, there was a lot more information about like meetings, meetups, and groups. But the one thing that I thought was actually really, really nice was that instead of eliminating being the binary like in its all, they actually had meetings that were designated towards males only, but then they also had meetings that were designated for all genders. And it was a little, it was nice to be able to see that because personally, I love, like, I would love to go to organizations or, or groups, and if they are primarily one big group, then it might be a little bit hard to be involved in that. 
and I mean these groups are usually meeting for either ritual or any anything like that to our sexuality. I will say when looking anything up there is not a lot of people of color present in the development of this religion. And that's why I made sure I want to say that, again, I was only really able to find a good amount of history and information based on the religion aspect of things. So this really is only talking about um, paganism as a constructed religion and um, Wicca as a constructed religion. So that's why I just want to you know, put it out there that that's kind of the reason why. Um, there also was an author called, um, her name is Starhawk. Cool ass name. Like, I want the name Starhawk, let's be honest. Um, but she was a eco-feminist, which, where has that term been my whole life, right? Um, but she was the writer of a popular book called The Spiral Dance, and, um, it pretty much sparked like a big push towards the goddess movement again um and that was amazing uh she i'm gonna link all the books and there's so many books that i found that i want i just i i need to read i need in my life i need i just i i need <laughs> so if you guys want a series where I have book recommendations or anything like please let me know because I'm I would love to do that I would love to have a series um on this channel um where I'm able to have all of the books that we read and book recommendations um anywho um Starhawk also wrote Fifth Sacred Thing which actually won the Lambita Award um, for Best Gay and Lesbian Science Fiction. Phenomenal. Listen, science fiction as itself is like a whole different animal, but I would love, I would love to. Um, but she also was the founder of the Earth Activist Trainings. So that actually teaches permaculture, um, grounded in spirit and focusing on activism. And as well as she was a co-founder in the Reclaiming Community and her archives can be found in the Graduate Theological Union Library. So let's talk about where these communities are. When I was looking at what's still active, what's not still active, um, the reclaiming community, I could find um, a decent amount of like gatherings and the website was fairly up to date. The Radical Fairies website is a little not up to date. Like when I was reading about the website, it was on it's only being maintained by certain people, so it seems like the community is pretty tight knit. Um, but I'm sure that if there's meetings or meetups or anything like that um that are on there that people are interested in you can go check that out i'm going to just say there are way too many people in this world for us to be worried about whether or not somebody loves somebody and that's just my opinion but as human beings, we are born into this world. We all possess magic that flows within us. We all possess the love and the light that flows throughout our bodies. And to live in a magical sense and embrace that part of us is magical. It is, it is phenomenal. We are literally taking what society tells us not to do and instead of conforming and essentially harming ourselves or worse wind up dead like we are embracing it and we're pushing those norms and we're making sure that we're heard and that's what matters and i am 
I am very, I'm very, I am trying to stay positive with the way that this world is going and it's really, it's getting, it's getting difficult. <laughs> it's getting difficult. Every day it proves me wrong in that I should always be negative and it proves me wrong that I should stay positive, you know? We have that kind of duality combating this and I just want everyone to know that we all have power within ourselves to make changes happen in this world. We all have that power and I think that's what a lot of these activists that kind of popped up and I only covered like the three that I talked about because there are so many more. Um, Evans wound up having, um, he had a couple lovers in his lifetime and those people were also a part of the Liberation Front and were part of the community that did their own activist work. And Martello, he continued to write columns and Starhawk is still present now and it, like, I'm pretty sure she runs or she continues to edit and have articles on um uh faith spiritual and faith website um but again i'll keep everything and make sure everything's in the description for you guys to kind of look into and show you a little of resources again i know that i am not good at at talking about anything like this <laughs> i am not good at speaking um, I'm kind of a little frozen because I haven't been in front of a camera in a little bit. So if people are listening to me right now on my podcast and be like, what the heck is going on? You know the reason. Um, this is what happens when you get in front of the camera. You don't know what's happening anymore. You don't know what words to say. <laughs> um, but I, you know, this faith and this spirituality has given me such freedom to be able to express my emotions clearly, not shame me for what I am feeling, not shame me for what I believe in. And it continues to show me every single day that despite what the big gigantic picture says about me or about my community, that we always have a place. And I think that's why it is amazing to see so many queer people now and the big boom in the witchcraft community. You are loved. You are worthy. And you can do and be whatever the fuck you want to be. And that is all I have to say. <laughs> Continue pushing social norms. Continue being yourself. Because without that, you would be a shell. So continue, continue being yourself. So this was my rocky, 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 rocky video. Um, I really hope that you enjoyed the parts that I was able to convey clearly. Um, I do apologize for how I am speaking. Um, I am really trying my best. I've been extremely overstimulated for the past couple of days so it's been a little hard um, to make the content that I need to. Um, so thank you for sticking around. If you made it this far please like, comment, let me know if you guys want me to do a video series on book recommendations or talking about books. Um, because I really, I really love reading. Um, despite my inability to have consistently clear conversations about topics, I do enjoy a good book. <laughs> so if that's something you guys are interested in, please comment, like the video, it really helps. Do the bell, you know, subscribe, all those things. Um, that they tell you to do. I also have a podcast if you wanted to listen to this rather than watch my face. Um, you can uh, listen to my podcast at Honeycomb Home. It is on platforms that do the podcast things. So Google Podcasts, Apple, Spotify, you know, all the stuff. Um, and I will be seeing you very soon and there is going to be a part two so the next week we will be talking about gender um 
and that I'm actually really excited about because that's where the majority of the information that I was able to find. Um, so I'm, I'm actually really excited to talk about that. Um, and I felt that that was needed considering that when I was doing the research for this, there was only a lot of information about the gay community as cis white men. But it still wasn't as inclusive as it could have been and that kind of sucks. So next week I'll be talking about gender, which also does kind of play into that. Um, and yeah. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope you have a wonderful week. I will see you next week and I'll continue to talk about this. Please follow me on all the socials, blah, 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 blah. Thank you. Bye-bye.